We have had more than a little bit of conversation about House Bill 2004, and to everyone that came to the public hearing we had earlier, I really appreciated um, everyone that testified, both in favor and opposition to the bill. I know that this is an issue that has really captured the attention of people all over the state and is really driven by a, a crisis that is being experienced in the the districts of many colleagues of mine, um, including uh, most of the folks that are that are sitting at the dais here, we have in Olis literally thousands of letters from tenants and landlords all across the state expressing uh, their perspectives, their concerns, and um, I, I think it's really important at the outset. The vast majority of, of landlords are great landlords, and the vast majority of tenants are great tenants. And when we do laws like this, what we are addressing are the, the issues of the minority of, uh, Peter Buckley taught me to never say bad actors. What is it that he had to say instead? It was bad apples or? But apples are good too. Anyway, <laughs> mo mo most people are well-meaning and, and, and do the best they can. So what, what we have today to consider are the Dash 9 amendments, which make changes to the underlying bill of um, underlying House Bill 2004. And I just want to outline what those are, then we'll have some discussion up here at the dais. Um, the, the first is that um, in, in the base bill, House Bill 2004, the, the bill proposed to lift the preemption on local communities for doing uh, rent stabilization. Um, House, the Dash 9 amendments removed that provision from the bill, so that rent stabilization piece would no longer be there, and instead it would, uh, that would be replaced with a provision that says that a landlord can increase the rent for any individual tenant only once every 10 months. There is no provision in that, um, in that amendment for uh, how much that rent increase can be. It's just the frequency could not be more than once every 12 months. Um, the Dash 9 amendment also changes that 30-day no-cause eviction grace period from six months to nine months so that uh, no-cause um, could be that 30-day no-cause eviction notice could be given in the first nine months of a month-to-month -month tenancy. And then after that first nine months, the eviction would have to be for cause with the 90 days notice with the new cause categories added. So um, you could still um, have someone leave if the landlord intends to convert the unit into non-residential use or wants to demolish it, wants to sell it, wants to move into it. Um, there, there's that whole list that's very similar to the underlying 2004. Um, the, it, it preserves the piece that if it's a landlord-based cause, uh, landlords that are operating five or more units would pay one month of, of rent in a relocation cause. One of the questions that came up before was what happens if I, I only have two units, but my units are operated by or managed by a property management company. Does that throw me into that over that over uh, five? It does not. The, the, the number is based on how many units the landlord owns. So you could own two units, operate two units, you could have that management sent out to a property management company, you still wouldn't fall into that um, place that is is paying the, um, the relocation fee. Uh, and then it's important to remember that if the tenancy is within the same structure on the same property that the landlord lives, that a no-cause eviction can still be issued after that first nine months, with, but that would be with 60 days notice. There's a new provision in the Dash 9 that says that a landlord uh, cannot issue a no-cause eviction even in that first nine months within 60 days of receiving a written request for repairs that are necessary to correct a violation of the building, health, or housing code, or to correct an uninhabitable condition that's described in statute. So what we're talking about are violations of codes and, and basic habitability standards that we heard a little bit about in the hearings, and we've heard a lot about those in the in the forums with some concerns about um, retaliation, and that, that provision actually came um, from a number of landlords that wrote in and, and suggested that. Uh, it, it states that the Dash 9 has a fixed term tenancy uh, would be for at least six months unless a shorter term is requested by, by the tenant. Um, the Dash 9 restores the, the typical fixed term lease. So if you um, have a 12-month 
lease at the end of that 12 months, the contract is up. It, it doesn't automatically roll over. Uh, it does require that the landlord inform the tenant 90 days before the end of that fixed term lease, whether they intend to renew the lease or not. And the tenant needs to respond to the landlord uh, within 40, before at least 45 days before the expiration of the lease about whether or not they intend to to kind of accept that offer of the <coughs> of the renewed tenancy and that's important so that people can get it back on the on the market and then if the if the landlord does not inform the tenant if that notice never comes then at the end of the contract the tenant can either move or it rolls into a month to month and you deal with it from from there um, and that is that that is it it uh, replaces the, it replaces 2004 and those are the dash 9 amendments